Welcome to the June 20th, 2019 Planning Board uh, meeting for the City of Nashua. A little bit unusual tonight, all of our officers are not present. Our, our, ours is a nine-member board. A quorum for our board is five people, which we have tonight. Uh, but I think it was, it was uh, prearranged through the Planning Department that they would ask me to chair this meeting and, and Ms. Hopper to, um, to secretary the meeting. But I do think we need a motion from our board members to, for that to happen. So I would appreciate it if someone would just make a motion that under the circumstances where our officers are not here, that I chair the meeting tonight and then Ms. Hopper uh, be our secretary before we go any further. I make a motion that Mr. Rapucci be the chair and that Ms. Hopper be the secretary for tonight's June 20th meeting. Thank you. Second to that? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So that that's done. So let's, um, I'll ask uh, if you would take a, a roll call. Yes. Um, Mayor Donches. Mike Peterson. Present. Scott LeClaire, Adam Varley, Edward Weber, Alderman David Tenza. Present. Alderman Mary Ann Melisa Golja. Steve Ducran. Present. Jerry Rapucci. Present. Maggie Harper, present. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a set of minutes. Do we do that next? Yeah, do the minutes now. So we have a set of minutes from the um, June 6th meeting, would anybody, did anybody have a chance to review them and would anybody like to make a motion that the minutes be accepted? If not, we can put this on hold. Uh, uh, I reviewed the minutes from the uh, uh, last meeting of June 6th and would make a motion that they be uh, accepted as drafted. Second to that motion, Mr. Peterson. Any Second. discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's done. Um, communications, Mr. Houston. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And members of planning board, uh, if you turn to your packet, I'll quickly go over the items you received uh, uh, since your mailing went out. <clears throat> you have an amended agenda uh, dated today um, with uh, several postponements. The first one is uh, case number one, Public Service Co. of New Hampshire and City of Nashua. That's been postponed to the July 11th meeting. And then all of your... Uh, other business items number two, three, and four have also been postponed to the July 11th meeting. And you also have communications in your packet on, on those items. Um, you have a, an item on case number one, which is the postponement of that from the applicant. <clears throat> on case number four, you have a communication from Fieldstone, uh, which uh, it are some additional waivers that they're requesting for their case number four. And also there's a revised plan for that case, same case number four in your packet, 11 by 17. And then you have a, a communication uh, from Joe Mendola on uh, case number six, which is uh, the district, uh, or we refer to as the Oval. It's um, concerning engineering comments, revised engineering comments. And <clears throat> the two other communications deal with other business item number three and number four, requesting postponement. And then lastly, you have a communication on uh, just information on uh, housing advocate training, which is uh, to be held on Monday, June 24th, 2019. Here's, uh, the National City Hall and Auditorium. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And then we would uh, look for reports of Chair's Committee as li liaisons. Does anyone have anything to report to the board? Seeing nothing. Okay. Um, we have, it looks to me like the applicants are here and we don't have any uh, anybody in the audience beyond that, but I'll still go through the procedures briefly. Uh, tonight, what we have um, subdivisions as as uh, as well as uh, site plans. Uh, we'll consider whether or not they're ready to be taken off the table and for our consideration. Once we once we decide that and accept it, we'll move into the public hearing 
on the uh, on the topic during the public hearing the applicant will have a chance to present their uh, their application and we'll also give the uh, opportunity to the public to speak in favor or with questions or concerns about the, that application uh, once that's completed we'll close the public hearing and then we will open the public meeting the public meeting is the session where the public observes us however doesn't participate our board then uh, discusses the application and and decides how we're going to proceed with it approved an eye or table or however we do that we do ask just in general terms that um, even though the, the meeting closes sometimes we do find it necessary to reopen the meeting sometimes we need a little bit more information uh, than we got that we realized in our discussion so anybody who has an interest in a case please stay until until it's completely finished because it is possible that we would reopen the public hearing for a specific reason uh, I don't need to get into too much detail about how the uh, the people in opposition or in, in favor how that process goes because I don't see it happening tonight if it comes up we'll I'll get, I'll get into a little more detail with that so uh, with that I think we will move to the uh, the first thing we're going to consider tonight which is actually the first site plan we have two applicants here tonight one is is um, has three site plans and a subdivision before us that's the flatley company we're going to go with that uh, first and, and my understanding is correct right and uh, please feel free to correct me if we have something out of the order that you expect it but I think we're going to start with uh, new business site plan three um, which is John J. Flatley Company owner applicant and acceptance uh, application and acceptance of proposed site plan amendment to NR2-2165 to show a lot line relocation. And uh, then we'll go on to, uh, to the second, to what's actually number five on our agenda, which is associated to this. And then we'll go to, over to the, um, to the subdivision plan. And we're going to handle all four of these at the same time I'm figuring and then or you know in, in, in a congruent way and then we'll we'll certainly make separate motions on the things but that's the way we proceed so mr. chair you yes. should um, probably uh, accept jurisdiction of each exactly. of these cases first thank you with so somebody want to make a motion on the uh, on the four flatly applications or even just the first one it's it's fine to that it's ready for us to accept it. I make a motion that we accept the applications. Seconded? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, so we're off on all four of your uh, things before us. Welcome. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Chad Brannan. It's a long name with Gilstone Lake Assaults. Our office is located at 206 Home Street in Medford, New Hampshire. Uh, with me tonight is Kevin Walker with the John Flatley Company, and we are before you this evening seeking approval on four applications, as um, Mr. Chairman um, kind of explained. All of these applications are related to a proposed uh, climate control self storage facility that will propose in, in Gateway Hills. In order to create a separate parcel for the proposed facility, we've had to amend two existing site plans subdivide a property and then obtain a site plan approval um, uh, for the proposed facility. As, um, If you don't mind, just introduce yourself again sure. so that it gets on the record. <laughs> Good evening again for the record. Uh, Chad Brannon, civil engineer with Fieldstone Land Consultants. As you have kind of announced or, or laid out, Mr. Chairman, uh, the staff has asked us to address the site plan amendments first, followed by the subdivision request, and then the uh, site plan approval that we're requesting for the uh, climate control self-storage facility. So um, we'll start with the amended uh, site plan application for tax map parcel A-798. Uh, this parcel is part of the larger Gateway Hills, which is formerly known as the Nashua Technology Park. The John Flatley Company has acquired um, a number of parcels over the years, which now encompasses approximately 400 acres of contiguous land. The uh, Gateway Hills is a mixed-use development um, 
property with professional offices, um, research and development buildings, retail space, a hotel, multifamily housing, and recreational spaces, as well as a number of uh, site amenities. Servicing Gateway Hills is one uh, public road known as Tara Boulevard and three private roads um, known as Innovative Way, Research Drive, and Digital Drive. This particular site plan amendment application proposes to reduce the size of the subject property by 1.104 acres from 129.729 acres to 128.625 acres. This new area will, will uh, partially accommodate the proposed new uh, climate control self uh, storage facility and this application is simply for the movement of a lot line with a subdivision and site plan to follow. There are no changes proposed to the subject property other than the uh, size of the, um, the property itself and as part of this application we are requesting two waivers one waiver from section 190282A regarding the drafting standards as we do have a plan in the plan set that is smaller um, than a one inch to 50 uh, foot scale. And we're also requesting a waiver for um, locating all physical features within a thousand feet of the subject property. So that's the um, first site plan amendment that we have before you. We have received the staff memo for this evening's meeting and we do not object to any of the staff recommendations or findings. So I, Thank you. I could go through the waiver request if you'd like, Mr. Chairman, but I think they're, those two are pretty straightforward. Why don't we just touch on them if we need to, if somebody has a question or a concern about it. Um, yeah, I think your testimony testifying that, uh, that they're uh, all acceptable is, is Anybody have any questions? I can go on to the next site plan amendment or if you want to act on them individually. How would it be better for you? What do you think is more fluent for, for you to present? Do well, we were to asked to pre uh, present them individually, but I'm happy to, to continue if the, if the board wants to address them at, in the end. Why don't you go ahead and give us a chance to listen to the whole okay. uh, thing if, and then we'll consider them individually when it comes up to motions. Sure. So the plan that's on the screen, I guess I should have touched on this, the yellow highlighted area is the area of parcel A-798 that we're um, looking to um, take out and, and make part of a new lot that we're, we're going to create when we get to the subdivision portion. The second site plan amendment um, that we have before you pertains to tax map parcel A-713, and that is the blue area um, that's on the plan before you. This site plan amendment consists of making uh, modifications to tax map parcel A-713. Um, That's, I'm sorry. This parcel is situated at 10 Tara Boulevard and is comprised of 10.116 acres of land currently. The subject site is um, occupied by an office building with associated site improvements as depicted on the existing conditions plans that we've submitted with the application. This site plan amendment proposes to reduce the size of this parcel by 1.12 acres from 10.116 acres to 8.997 acres. The new area will partially accommodate the proposed new um, climate control self-storage facility, just like the um, former application that I presented. And as, as well as the, f the former application, this application also only uh, proposes to reduce the lot size. We're not proposing any modifications to um, the site being um, tax map parcel A-713. As part of the, this application, we are requesting one waiver, and that waiver um, consists of section 190282B9, which requires that physical features on site and within a thousand feet of the subdivision be depicted on the plan. We obviously, we've depicted everything on site and within um, proximity of the site, but we have not gone to the 1,000 feet um, off the subject property. 
Again, we are in receipt of the uh, latest staff report for this application and we have no objections to the staff recommendations or findings. Okay. The next application that we have before you pertains to the um, proposed subdivision. Now that we've touched on the site plan amendments, what we've essentially done is taken a piece of the property from tax map parcel A-798 and parcel A-713, and we're looking to create a new lot. Um, this lot will consist of um, 2.224 acres and will have access off of Innovative Way. The proposed lot number is uh, parcel a 10 18. The new lot is created to accommodate the proposed new climate control uh, self-storage facility and to our knowledge this uh, proposed lot will meet and comply with all uh, local ordinances. We are in receipt of the latest staff memo as it pertains to this application and just like the other two we have no objections with the staff uh, recommendations and findings. As part of this application we are also requesting two waivers. Um, one of them ha pertains to uh, section 190.282a regarding the drafting standards as we do have a plan of one inch equals 200 feet um, and that's essentially to show the whole uh, project because it's quite a large piece of property. We're also requesting a waiver from section 190.282b9 which requires again that physical features be shown within 1,000 feet of the uh, subject property. And then the um, last application that we have before you is the site plan application. This proposal consists of developing tax map parcel A-1018, assuming that application is approved, um, into a 73,442 square foot climate control self-storage facility. The facility will be three, a three-story building along the front and then four stories in the rear, so it basically has a walkout um, um, basement, if you will, on the, on the back side of the building. The site improvements will include uh, reconfiguring the existing parking area on site to provide better traffic flow to the facility and provide for 47 parking spaces on site, which includes two handicap accessible spaces. We have reviewed this layout with the fire department and have made some modifications to address um, their concerns and comments. Essentially, um, what the fire department was looking for was just better access to the front of the building. So we reduced the, we actually modified some of the landscape islands in front of the buildings to um, striped islands so that they wouldn't, they, they wouldn't, they would have unimpeded access to the um, front of the building. And that was done at their request. We've also worked with the city's engineering department to review our site design as well as the stormwater management design for the project. The stormwater management for this site will be mitigated through the construction of a stormwater basin along the south side of the proposed property. The redevelopment of the parking area, so there's two watershed areas. There's a watershed area that run, that drains to the southwest and then there's a watershed area that drains to the southeast. The area draining to the southeast um, will actually have a reduction in of impervious cover as a result of this project because in reconfiguring the parking area we have a slight reduction in impervious surfaces in that watershed. So the stormwater management report shows that we meet all the city requirements um, and we have successfully gone through the engineering review accordingly. Other site improvements for this project will include site lighting. Uh, we're basically utilizing existing lighting within the um, parking area, but we do have some building uh, mounted lights that are depicted on the on the lighting plan in the package. We also have pre uh, prepared a detailed landscaping plan, uh, which shows landscaping in the islands in the parking lot and also um, in the stormwater management areas. The site will be serviced by municipal sewer, uh, Penichuk water and natural gas. 
There are wetland buffer impacts associated with this project, mainly due to the utility extensions and the construction of the stormwater mitigation. We did receive a favorable review from the Conservation Commission, and at the uh, March 27th meeting, we obtained a special exception through the ZBA, and this plan does comply with all of the conditions imposed by uh, both of those boards. We have reviewed the uh, staff memo for this evening's meeting, and just like the other applications, we do not have any objections to any of the staff recommendations or findings. With this particular application, we are requesting three waivers. Um, one of the waivers pertains to um, section 19282B9, again, with the 1,000 feet of detail, uh, survey detail within um, the property limits, um, from the property limits, excuse me. And we're also requesting a waiver from section 190-198 regarding off-street parking. The parking matrix for um, this this particular use is actually equivalent to office space that requires a, a minimum of one space per 1,000 square feet, which, which equates to 73 spaces. We're proposing 47 spaces on this site, um, but we also have a parking agreement or will have a parking agreement between um, both the subject property A-1018 and the adjacent property A-713, uh, um, so they'll be able to share parking. If you look at both of those lots together, we, far, we technically exceed the uh, parking requirements. On top of that, when you take a look at um, climate control self-storage, it's a very low in, um, intense use, and the parking demands are not what is, um, don't, don't equate to what is outlined in the um, city ordinance. So staff has asked us to request a waiver from this, even though we do have a uh, parking agreement and technically meet you know, the, the intent of the regulations, I think, by the amount of parking available. Um, but that's, that's a waiver that we're requesting as part of this, and I'd be happy to go through the, um, you know, that waiver request in additional detail. And the other uh, waiver request is from Section 190-172C, uh, which requires varied roof lines. Um, we've gotten, we have uh, received approval on this waiver on some of the adjacent structures. We did a restaurant building right next door, um, which we received the waiver on. We also did f uh, flex buildings across the street, which we received um, a waiver on from this section. And the argument or the justification for those waivers had to do with 100 through 300 innovative way and how you know the architecture that we're proposing is very similar to the surrounding structures. So those are the three waivers that we're requesting for this application. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I think I've spoken for a little bit of time. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions that the board may have. Thank you. Uh, before I get to the questions, there's just a, a little housekeeping that the staff pointed out to me. The staff reports have, some of them have erroneous dates on them at the top. They should be June 20th, all of them. So if you see other dates on there, they, they intended them to say June 20th. And with that, I will just ask, uh, does anybody on the board have a question? Thank you. And, and you mentioned, I think you may have talked about the parking um, waiver that you're requesting. I'm not so much con concerned about the new parcel as the old parcel, uh, the ex existing parcel of land. Um, there looks to be a fair amount of parking uh, around that building. Can you give us a sense of, and I know you say if you take the parcels together, um, that, that there's adequate parking spaces uh, under the, the ordinances. Um, can you give us a sense on the existing parcel, uh, how many parking spots will be left and how many parking spots are, are required? Um, under Ab the absolutely. So um, with this proposal, um, parcel A713, which is the, the um, lot with the existing office building on it, and in really a quite large uh, parking area. We'll have um, the, the requirement, the minimum requirement per the ordinance is 158 parking spaces. Um, and the, this particular lot will have, um, just try to find the note here, sorry. 
actually grabbed the wrong plan. So the, the total parking that's on this particular plan, which is the site plan, so I'm looking at sheet two of 15 of the site plan set, it outlines that the total parking between the two properties would be 601 spaces, which includes um, the handicap accessible spaces as well. So the parking on the site as a whole far exceeds the uh, minimum requirements um, outlined in the ordinance. But what's important is how it actually functions. So this parking area in the back has, is, is primarily um, vacant and, you know, the building is, is, is occupied. I think the occupancy level of that building is 90%. So the building's about 90% occupied and the, the parking area in, the, in this vicinity is, is essentially not used. So we are very comfortable that there's adequate parking on site. If I look at the subdivision plan, I think it specifically says um, how, many park, how much parking is on that lot. So the, actually the amended site plan, which is NR 1265, notes that there will be 554 spaces on that particular parcel. So again, far exceeds the minimum requirements of 158 spaces. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Mr. Peterson. Um, I'd like to point out that uh, in the staff report with regard to the climate control storage facility and in the correspondence and tonight's presentation, it was referred to as lot A1018, but all the drawings say A1016. The site plan drawing, the site plan set said A1016. We actually submitted revised plans correcting all those okay. lot numbers. Today. I just want the assessor department to yeah. know which what to call it they change we changed the lot numbering through the review and so that's why there was a carryover there but they it yeah they're all yeah but not the map the packet that we received tonight or it came in the mail okay great just want to make sure there's no um, discrepancy in the yep. lot number Thank you. So that's a very good catch. <laughs> Did my homework. Sure. <laughs> take a lesson from Steve. Uh -huh. <laughs> I make it fail. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Uh, does anybody else have any any questions of the applicant? I do, Mr. Chair. Mr. Um, yep. They're <clears throat> rather minor, but I think they need to be uh, pointed out. Um, on the subdivision plan. One of the stipulations is about blasting. That's uh, number seven. I think that should be on the site plan for the new parcel. Shouldn't be on a subdivision plan. And I'm sorry, I didn't catch what you said. Okay, number Mr. seven, the stipulation number seven talks about blasting. Okay, sure. This is the staff memo. Right. Okay. So that should be a condition. Uh, staff could win on that if they disagree. I think that makes sense. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so uh, also stipulation number eight on the subdivision plan talks about um, the applicant shall provide the a public and emergency cross access easement in the event that the, the lots are sold. Um, if you look at the existing plan, the existing conditions, um, you will see that there are pedestrian accesses uh, or access through the different parcels. So I think you should have an easement for, you know, conditional easement uh, for pedestrian access as well. Um, you also have utilities crossing parcels could have an easement for utilities, for drainage, and anything that, that you know, crosses the, the parcel boundaries. So I think um, asking for that 
is in order. Uh, you also okay. talked about the parking agreement. You look at the, um, the, the parking crossing, the, the two parcels, 713 and the new parcel. Uh, the, pros the, the, the parcel line goes right across parking, mm -hmm. you know, dividing parking bays. And I, I think you need to have, uh, you have the parking agreement, but you also have to have um, some kind of easement in the event that the parcel gets sold. Absolutely. And we, we have agreed to that, uh, the easement. The agreement, I think, is the solution now because it's under the same ownership you know, just between the two parcels. And then um, just to address your questions about the easements, um, we do a blanket easement for utilities on the property, so I think we can um, certainly address all of those comments. All right. Um, <clears throat> so, so then you presented the site plans for the, the two existing parcels. Um, so there's a, a minor change on parcel A798. Uh, you're changing the crosswalk. I think you know that, right? So there's a change. It's yeah, there was, a, there was actually an engineering comment relative to making some modifications to the crosswalk. Okay. And process 713, um, there are some minor changes. Uh, you're looking at putting some curbing to create those islands, and the curbing falls on the existing parcel. So I'm just saying technically there are changes in those parcels. Right, it's the matter of the, se the sequence of the applications that we're presenting. And so the presentation was the amended site plans, and then the subdivision, and then the site plan for the, the, so when we're doing an amended site plan, we're just talking about area swaps. When we get to the, the climate control self storage facility site plan proposal, there is changes internally, but at that time we're making, um, we're, we're making revisions to the site from a stormwater standpoint to mitigate those changes and to design for those changes. So it all, it really has to do with the approach, but I, I do know exactly what you're referring to. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, and the only other thing is that um, in 813, you said it, there are 554 um, spaces. That's what 813 being left. That's correct. Right? Um, it would have helped if you had put some counts on on that site plan. There is a there is a parking calculation in the notes on that site plan. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't tell because I, I you, maybe the full set has um, you know the different counts, but like for instance, this is what I had to go by, and um, you know just just blanks and not that I wanted to verify what you're saying, but I just wanted to give an idea. Are you left with 554, and where are they? Uh, and I couldn't tell. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, those are the minor comments that I have. Well, thank you, Mr. Decrane. Before we go further, is there anything that you raised that will require some sort of comment on the actual stipulations, or is it, are you satisfied that just through the conversation that your issues are covered? Um, well, I'd like to see the note, the blasting note B, transferred to the site plan. And um, and that the blanket easement or easements um, should be reflected somewhere, maybe in the su on the subdivision plan. So okay. We Do we need exists. to consider that on a stipulation um, when we're putting the up when we're uh, making the motion? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So maybe you can just articulate that when we're if you're not the one making the motion. I think I'll need staff's help on that, um, or even the applicant to, to get a wording, because I don't know the, um, how those black uh, easements are, you know, what, la what language is used for those. So maybe you can offer that, Chad, if, at this time. Yeah, I think just a generic um, condition that we will work with, you know, the applicants to work with staff on uh, providing appropriate easement documents um, for you know, this proposal. I and mean, that could be a condition on, um, I think it would be on the subdivision and the site plan. I know we've provided um, staff with those documents in the past, so we'll, we'll really be updating them 
um, to incorporate the new parcel that we're proposing and then obviously the new uh, site development. Is that satisfactory, Mr. DeCreen? Sounds. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Peterson. I have another question. Um, with regard to the um, climate control storage, is there a place for storing the trash and getting the trash picked up and removed? So we're, we're not proposing uh, dumpsters on the site because what happens is people tend to store, you know, their goods and it'll find its way into the dumpster. But we do have um, um, a couple of compactors within the Gateway Hills facility. So they'll like manage the property management will utilize those areas for uh, trash removal for this office space. Um, people will be responsible for taking their own trash, which is essentially their possessions, um, you know, from from the storage units themselves. Instead of leaving it behind for the management to figure out what to do with it. Correct. I mean, if they leave it behind, then management would have to take care of it, and there would probably be um, costs associated with that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to speak in favor of any of these uh, site plans or subdivision? Is there anybody that has questions or concerns about the, the presentation by the applicant? Okay, seeing none, we will close the public hearing and open the public meeting, again, reserving the right, as we very well may need to open it again. Uh, for specific questions, but other than that, we'll close the public hearing, open the public meeting. Thoughts? <clears throat> well, I'll just say I think it was well represented and, and pretty clear to me in what their intention is, and I didn't see any, you know, as usual, this is a very well-engineered project. I didn't see anything that caught my attention that would make me wonder if if this if there's uh, something uh, deficient in this uh, that's my feeling in summary anybody else Mr. Mr. I'm sorry Alderman Tenzo thank you uh, no I, I mean I think we've been um, prepared for this and in, in the amendments that we've made uh, to the ordinances to the um, well I, I think we I think we, we know that these types of changes are coming in, in the area that this is going to be in um, I think is probably consistent with uh, this this type of use for um, for some kind of self storage with the with the mixed use I mean there are a lot of apartments uh, down there both in this area as well as on Spitbrook Road so um, I think it'll fit in in with the character um, of that area and um, looks like it's probably necessary thank you yeah, and as far as parking goes, I think the, these these kind of sites are historically low, uh, low intensity use. Uh, I'm very comfortable that even though they're the rule of the city requires a certain amount of parking, I think they have it more than covered. That was my sense of it. Uh, anybody else have any comments, or if not, we can start on motions. Um, I think the first. I think the first thing we want to have a motion on are the uh, site plans. The first, uh, the first one being what's number three on our agenda. And I think we'll do this, the, uh, the motions separately for all four of these items. Um, the applicant, the, the applicant ex application acceptance proposed site plan NR 2165 to show the lot line relocation uh, for 100. Dash 326, lot 9798. Uh, Somebody care to make a motion on that? Or well, correct me if I'm asking for the wrong thing first. I was just looking. I think uh, normally we do the subdivision first. Is that what we would do? I, I was under the impression that they, that the subdivision required amending the two site plans for us am I right about that or okay let's do that okay 
So that's fine. So we'll go with um, Mr. Ducrane suggested the subdivision plan first. Which one first? Subdivision, the, the number two, the, uh, the proposal to, uh, on the subdivision. It's lot 9, uh, 798 and 713. I'll give it a try. Okay. With regard to new business number two, subdivision, owner, John J. Flatley Company. We, we find that it meets subdivision NRO 190-138-G with the following stipulations. Number one, the request is a waiver of 190-282-A, which sets the minimum scale for subdivision plans is granted, finding that the waiver will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. Number two, the request for a waiver of 190-282-B9, which requires an existing conditions plan, is granted, finding that the waiver will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. And stipulations three through nine will accept as written. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. I think, and, uh, and do we, do we, yes. Yes. Thank you. I was just going to say that, but thank you. Thank you. So we want to um, – I'm sorry. Say what you, you were you – were, I was thinking of something else. You were speaking to number seven. Delete number seven. And move it to the site plan. Mr. Peterson, are you, are you good with that? Delete you seven. want to delete seven and put it on the site plan rather than on the subdivision. So with regard to my statement, we'll delete item seven of the stipulations as written, and we will move that to the site plan. And then we, w I think we wanted to add a stipulation uh, reference to Mr. DeCrane's concerns about the, um, that, the, that the applicant will work with staff in regard to all the easement agreements. If you will. And, uh, and add a stipulation. The applicant will work with staff with regard to the easements and write up the proper wording for that. Thank you. Second to the motion. Second. Seconded by Alderman Tenza. Discussion on the motion. Mr. Crane, does that satisfy what you were asking for? We should be covered. Thank you. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 That's uh, unanimous. So that is uh, passed. Now we will go to the next one, uh, which is the, uh, the first thing listed on the new business site plans, uh, which has a three next to it. Somebody want to take a crack at that one? Mr. Peterson, you're on a roll. <laughs> With regard to New business case number three, site plan amendment, owner John J. Flatley Company. Um, the planning board finds that it meets what is outlined in site plan NRO 190-146-D with four stipulations. The first. The request for a waiver of 282B9, which requires one to show all existing features within 1,000 feet for new subdivisions, is granted, finding that the waiver will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. Number two, the request for a waiver of 19282A, which requires drafting standards to be smaller than 50 feet to one inch, is granted finding that the waiver will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. And number three and four, as written in the original staff report. Thank you, Mr. Peterson. Um, do we want to add that number seven into this one? No. Okay. Uh, we would also like to add, um, no. no. 
Okay, so, I think so we're you, good. I think we're good. Thank Second you. to Mr. Peterson's motion. Second. Second up by Ms. Hopper. Any further discussion on that motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So that's unanimous. That's approved. Mr. Peterson, I'm not even going to just going to ask you. <laughs> on to the next one. Oh, there's another one? Well, there's two more. Oh, yeah. Uh, so it would be the. Um, we're talking about the fourth one on the agenda. New business number four site plan. Yes. Okay. With regard to new business number four site plan. Planning Board finds it meets the requirements outlined in NRO section 190-146-D with 12 stipulations. Stipulation 1, their request for a waiver of NRO 190-279-EE, which requires existing conditions to be shown, is granted finding that the waiver will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. Number two, the request for a waiver of NRO 190-198, which requires minimum parking standards for the site, is granted, finding that the waiver will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. Number three, the waiver of NRO 190-172C, which requires varied roof lines, is granted, finding that the waiver will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. And then four through 12, as written in the original staff report. This is where we want to add the blasting one, right? So that, that one that we took out, that number seven that we took out of the first one, we want to add that, I think, just as written. To mm. This. The blasting. Blasting. Uh, let me find that. Uh, also, we'd like to add a further stipulation. If blasting will occur as part of any construction activities, that the applicant submit a pre blasting and post blasting survey. Thank End you, of statements. Thank you. Anybody like to second uh, Mr. Peterson's motion? Second. Seconded by Alderman Tenza. Any further discussion on that motion? All in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? It's unanimous. So that passes. And the last one is uh, number five on the list here. Oh, that's me? That's what happens okay. when you volunteer. Um, with regard to new business case number five, site plan amendment, owner John J. Flatley Company, the planning board finds it meets the requirements outlined in site plan NRO 190-146D with three stipulations. Number one, the request for a waiver of 282B9, which requires one to show all existing features within 1,000 feet for new subdivisions, is granted, finding that the waiver will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. Number two and three, as written in the original staff report. Do we need the blasting thing too? I don't no. think so, right? We just needed it in that one. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Peterson. Anybody second uh, the motion? Second. Seconded by Alderman Tenza. Any further discussion on that motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And that's unanimous as well. Thank you for coming tonight. And with that, we'll move on. If everybody is good to continue. So we are. We'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is number six, Walnut, uh, Walnut Nashua LLC. The owner of the, the application acceptance of a proposed site plan to change the use of an existing building from courthouse to offices. 
and to show a 13,666 square foot building addition and associated site improvements. Okay, good evening. Welcome, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, I'm sorry? Thank you. Uh, so, sorry I should have done this while you were getting ready, but uh, somebody on the, on the board want to make a motion that we accept jurisdiction of this application. So moved. Okay. Uh, moved by Alderman Tenza and seconded by <coughs> Mr. Peterson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Well, again, good evening. Uh, for the record, my name is Jim Petropoulos. I'm a civil engineer with Hainer Swanson, doing business at 3 Congress Street in Nashua, New Hampshire, tonight representing the property owner, 25 Walnut Nashua LLC. And as just read into the record, we're seeking a site plan approval for uh, a building addition and a change of use uh, for property in the downtown area. Um, my job, of course, is to present the facts of, of the project and then answer any questions the board or the public may have. Um, in the upper left is the aerial we've provided of the, the, um, the site locus. Uh, what we're talking about is a, an oval-shaped 1.2-acre property uh, that is surrounded really by public roads. We have Walnut Street, uh, we have Chestnut Street, Central, we have Factory over here, we have West Pearl. And of course, this is the former, former courthouse building. Uh, our most immediate abutters across these public streets is Clock Tower Place to the north. Uh, some commercial properties and businesses to the east, primarily, I, I always consider it the National Wallpaper site, you know. Uh, to the south, there is uh, an auto retailer as well as a number of commercial buildings, the Plus Company, and then a commercial building uh, to the west. Uh, this lot is located in the D1 downtown zoning district. It's also located in the mixed use overlay district. And you know the mixed use overlay district um, blankets much of downtown Nashua and it really gives the planning board much authority in terms of things of uh, dimensional criteria and land uses. As background, as I mentioned, this is the former uh, Nashua District Courthouse facility. I believe the building was built in the late 70s. Um, it, uh, it contains a, uh, a two-story structure with a basement, the main body of the building, and about 34 parking spaces on site. Access is on Chestnut Street. Uh, this building has been vacant, I think, since about 2010, if I'm, uh, I'm not mistaken. It's a very visible property. I'm sure most of the board members are familiar with it. Fairly flat um, pavement, as I mentioned, 34 parking spaces located in the property. Uh, what's being proposed tonight in our application is really twofold. There's really two goals to this application. The first is to change the use from courthouses to offices. And then the second is to show a proposed two-story addition along the east elevation of the site. So let me try to describe a couple of the key elements of the project. Um, the two-story building addition measures about 14,327 square feet. The first floor will be for parking for employees of the facility. They'll be able to enter in on one side and out the other, and there's 17 spaces on that at grade first floor level. That's not a buried basement garage, it's just that level. And then above it, the second story, 
is 7,000 plus minus square feet of offices, which will be linked to the existing building. Access to the curb cut will remain off of Chestnut Street. Uh, we are reconditioning the site. Uh, we're essentially repaving it. It's dated, it's been there 40 years, it's in rough shape. Um, so we're giving it a new look. We're providing new lighting, new landscaping um, to, to the site plan. Uh, the project adds about 1,900 square feet, about half the size of this room of, of, uh, of new pavement. And so we're accounting for that with a recharge leaching basin located in the south part of the site to handle the increase of, of runoff coming off that new impervious area. There'll also be improvements to the existing building inside. It's gonna get completely gutted. The courthouses are coming out and new offices would be built in their place. New systems, new alarm systems, new sprinkler systems as identified in the report. Our application uh, does include some architecturals and I brought forth some perspective drawings here up on the board. Uh, you can see the goal is to match architecturally the new addition with the existing um, flat roofs. The, the height of the new addition measures about 28 feet, which is consistent with the scale of the existing building. The exterior materials will be a combination of brick veneer with masonry accents. Uh, we're proposing some awning accents above some of the windows throughout the building. Um, if you're wondering about traffic, we submitted a, a traffic report, essentially compared this new traffic to the previous use, just to try to give you a, a barometer as to how would this compare, even though it's been vacant for a number of years. Um, and the office building is, generates about 250 less cars a day. It's less intense of a use than it was for the courthouse facility. Uh, our clients hope to begin construction of the addition, the renovations and the site improvements in the summer of 2019 so that the building could be occupied in the spring of 2020. Uh, so in summary, you know, the objective of the project um, was really to convert this from, you know, the former courthouse use to, to an office use. Um, the best summary uh, for the project itself is the site suitability report. In a mixed use development, the applicant's required to submit the site suitability report. It's a little over and above what you typically see for site plans. Um, and what we addressed in that report is that the project is consistent. This redevelopment of this of this vacant building is consistent with the goals and objectives of the mixed use overlay district. We are maintaining uh, a significant character and size and scale of the existing building in sight. Uh, there are economic benefits to redeveloping a vacant building such as this. And we believe there's a long-term positive impact to the city of Nashua. Uh, no waivers, Mr. Chairman. Uh, staff report uh, provided by staff. Conditions are, are all acceptable to us and be happy to answer any questions uh, you or the board might have. Thank you, Mr. Petropoulos. One question I have just in looking at it. Is, do you anticipate that the parking requirements for that building will be satisfied right on site? So um, it's probably no secret our mixed use overlay I'm sorry, our site suitability report identifies the prospective tenant as being Penichuk Water. It's the goal to try to get their offices back into the downtown area of Penichuk Water Works. Um, they currently have uh, around 60 to 65 parking spaces. Uh, our site would provide 52. Um, there are 19 street parking spaces around the Oval on Chestnut and coming around Walnut right on the inside, 19 spaces there that uh, are, could be available for use, as well as the High Street Garage, which is located just a, a short walk away. So we, the answer to the question is yes, we believe we have, uh, we have uh, adequate parking. We will identify some of the spaces here as visitor parking. Uh, there are still few people who like to pay their bills in person, uh, their water bills. Uh, they do get some foot traffic, but it's not a whole lot. 
know, so this is all gonna, the intention is to be all administrative stuff. There's not going to yeah. be any any mechanical yeah, stuff. engineering and office. Now this is the first step in in a long series of steps that need to have sure. to happen uh, for, for to, to get them back into into the downtown area. But yes, that's the the hope. Thank you. Yep. Any questions? And, and this may not be a question for you, but a part of that uh, area, um, as it relates from Walnut Street to Factory Street, is now um, blocked off. There are planters there, um, and it's no longer in use. It, it, it seems like you're um, planning on that continuing. You're not asking the city to, to change that traffic pattern in any way. Yeah, the alderman is talking about this little leg right here, which used to be you know you could do a, a racetrack kind of around this site this has been partitioned i believe with jersey barriers or or, or such uh, they've painted it it looks like it's got a, kind of an urban small park feel to it now we're not proposing to touch anything outside the property line of, of this oval yeah any other questions for mr Patroclus? I think we're good. Well, thank you. Yep. Thank you, sir. Anybody else to speak in favor of the application or with questions or concerns about the application? Okay. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing and open the public meeting. I will just say nothing could be worse than the traffic impact of the courthouse when it was there. It was just a nightmare. Uh, especially at like 8 o'clock in the morning when there were 5,000 people that were supposed to show up at the same time. It was awful. So, And, and uh, yeah. the fact that, we're, that that's being developed to me is a, is a bonus for the city. That's my view of it. Um, I, don't, I don't feel quite comfortable that uh, a place of that size would be covered by that amount of parking uh, but I don't have any reason to object to it. I think I think the presentation is reasonable, and even if people do have to go off-site to park, I think it's still a, a great asset, considering the limitations of the site. So that, that's my input, anyway. Any other points of concern or questions? Well, I mean, I agree with you that that parcel being downtown there in the middle of the oval, um, aside from being an eyesore, now is is just an underutilized piece of piece of land. So um, I think any any improvements to it, uh, especially the improvements that they're uh, proposing, looks like it's going to be great and it's going to attract businesses downtown, uh, some offices, uh, whether it's Penichuk or somebody else. So um, it's another great improvement and it'll it'll definitely help out economically with the city thank you uh, does anybody else have any questions or comments seeing none somebody want to make a motion yes okay hold, hold on Okay, um, thank you. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion on um, the new business site plan number six, the owners being Walnut Street National LLC. Um, that the planning board makes a determination that the plan does meet the requirements as outlined in site plan. Uh, Site plan NRO section 190-146D uh, with the stipulations that um, prior to the chair signing the plan, all comments in an email from Joe Mendola, street construction engineer, dated, um, I'm sorry, did you say June, be June 19th? June 19th, 2019, shall be addressed to the satisfaction of the engineering department uh, as well as the stipulations two and three uh, as outlined by the staff. Thank you. So there's a motion on the table. Anybody want to second that motion? Seconded by Mr. Peterson. Any further discussion on that motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Again, it's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming, and good luck with the project. 
Okay, so that uh, uh, just a quick question for the for the uh, staff. So the items that were that were not going forward tonight that were tabled, do we have to comment them into the record, or can we just say that they're tabled until a further? They're postponed to a date certain. So sh should I speak to them, or can we just let it be? Okay. Uh, and I will just say for the record that uh, case number two on the subdivision plans, correct? That it was uh, tabled to a um, date certain uh, at the request of the applicant. Is that all? Uh, does that cover everything? Okay, so again, uh, for the record, item seven uh, will, has been postponed until July 11th. And number eight has been postponed to September 12th. Number eight, postponed to September 12th, thank you. Um, okay. The, the proposed agenda for the next meeting uh, does anybody see on the planning board meeting for July 11th? Uh, does anybody see any regional impact on those items? I looked them over. I did not. I looked them over as well. I couldn't see anything that impact the rest of the region. Okay. Um, I think we've covered. Is there anything we haven't covered yet that we should? Okay, thank you. So, any member of the board have anything uh, that they would like to raise or discuss? No. All right. Somebody want to make a motion to adjourn? Oh, excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Um, we need a second on the, um, uh, the there's no items of regional impact. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. So, a uh, um, motion that there were no uh, items of regional impact. Second. And uh, any further discussion on that? Thank you. We good? All right, I got a thumbs up from Linda so we can say uh, motion to adjourn. Yes. Did we discuss earlier whether or not the board would have to the staff? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Houston. Let me, let me find that, that email that I... Uh, We discussed earlier, but I got a little bit off track here. Is this item number four? You know, Ms. yeah, if I could, if you would, would you just explain it the way you explained it to me so that it... was not no, no.
Yes, yeah, so thank you. It's that that right. So we just want to make that recommendation to them because it's not in their purview, technically speaking, but it's their expert area of expertise. Yeah. So I, I will. Um, I'm. I will suggest that we do exactly that. We go through. Um, maybe we can communicate with Mr. Weber uh, via email to pass that through, since he's the representative to. Uh, Historic Commission and we invite them to and and that correspondence will include the dates of the upcoming meetings they're not going to have to come back to us they're going to have the opportunity to give their feedback to the, uh, the uh, at the other meetings at the upcoming in July and August I guess thank you, thank you. Uh, so yep so we'll make that I guess if we need a motion for that that's my motion I don't know if we do but uh, so moved. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and all in favor of that? Aye. 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 Um, I made it, and Mr. Peterson seconded it. And what else am I forgetting? We all good? All right. Motion to adjourn. I'm making it. Seconded okay. by Mr. Tenzel. <laughs> Yay. All right. We're adjourned. Thank you.